Hello everyone and welcome to my mini stock N1 in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 with the Making History DLC. Now having made the other replicas in my other videos, I did note that uh, not only were we missing the N1, but it was also sort of possible to make a small N1 that could fulfill the N1's mission, which is to land, uh, in this case, Kerbal on the moon and return that Kerbal safely back to Kerbin. And it possible to do so with 30 spark engines uh, arrayed somewhat haphazardly at the bottom here using Oscar B fuel tanks actually in the correct rings uh, ring of 6 and then a ring of 24 as the N1 had it and I think you'll agree that this looks reasonably like an N1 I'm sure other people have made stock N1 analogs and everything it's possible to make the bottom of this with the stock parts in 1.4 I believe because we've got the the uh, tank adapters from uh, uh, using the 1.875 meter form factor, which is this one. Before this, it wasn't uh, quite possible to make uh, this perfect a shape because we didn't have the 1.875 meter form factor. So yeah, uh, we've just recently had this ability. And it's basically spark engines all the way, except for the block D equivalent, which is right here. And uh, let me take, uh, that is Atmo uh, stats, and then this is the vacuum stats. And so this is the stage that's supposed to get us to the moon, and that one uses a Terrier engine. The rest is all... Unfortunately, the rest is all sparks, and unfortunately, really bad thrust to weight ratio. So it's going to be a little bit tough here to try and get this to orbit. And, uh, yeah, and of course it's got a lot of drag because of its shape. It's basically got drag on all of this surface here, one of the downsides. If I had used straight tanks here, I could have avoided using the fairing. But I wanted to use the fairing anyway, so I just uh, made it all with these nifty little tanks. But you could replace those with the usual tanks instead, and it'll still work. There's uh, um, uh, This stage finishes the descent to the moon, then ascends and returns back to Kerbin. So it does all that. Uh, this stage just uh, gets into orbit around the moon, and then begins the descent. Which is uh, basically uh, for descent the real thing did use two separate stages. We are not going to have a redocking, and we're not going to use a separate capsule for the landing as for the re-entry as they would have, but uh, on this size it's just not possible. So unless you have a, uh, a, an alternative capsule, shall we say, using the external command, <laughs> external command seat. In that case I suppose it's possible. But yes, so this is it. And let's see if it works. I don't know for sure. Uh, let's let's see what happens. I mean, the thing about the thing about this is, it definitely looks good. I mean, it looks the part, but its thrust weight ratios do not make me feel good about it. We also had to dump a lot of fuel to get the proper thrust weight ratios from these tanks using the spark engines. Now, if you could put you know other engines at the bottom, that'd be great, but. We, we don't exactly have, uh, well, yeah, I, I think these are the best to go with anyway. Uh, remember, you have to have good sea level ISP as well, and these do. And they have gimbling. So here we go. We're going to go up for a little ways. Obviously, we could pack more Delta V in here with uh, the tanks, but that would be at the cost of thrust to weight ratio. But we've got a lot of empty tanks on here right now. The Oscar B tanks are not the only ones you could use to uh, attach the spark engines. You can use the 0.625 meter nose cones, the small nose cones. But those, when they surface attach, uh, are tilted because they have a tilted side to them. And the Oscar Bs attach straight, so somewhat preferable in this case. Just gotta have a point pro grade. I have a feeling that we're going to need to go up quite a ways, so. Okay, stage. Yeah, I mean, look at that drop off. I mean, we have a 1.1 thrust to weight ratio there. But, and 1.08 now surface, but yeah, it's tough. You can see our time to apolapse is barely going up now. It could. We haven't broken the sound barrier yet. It's crazy. This stage doesn't really contribute very much. 
Okay, and stage. I didn't hot stage. Maybe if I'm confident that this thing can actually work, we'll hot stage someday, but not right now. I'm trying to flatten our orbit out. Maybe this is not the time to do that. We're not... I mean, the original thing is not supposed to complete orbit using the block D, but it's looking like we have to complete orbit using the block D, so that's not great either. All the delta V in the world cannot save you from a really bad thrust to weight ratio. I might offer this as a craft file and make it a challenge to use the, the rocket as configured and mess with the payload such that you can land on the moon and return safely back to Gerben. You, you can fill the payload with whatever you want and whatever engines you want. As long as you don't change the first three stages. Okay. There you go, the fairings and everything and the block D stage. At least has a decent thrust to weight ratio now. But even it can't finish orbit right now. If we get rid of those uh, aerodynamic tail things that I've used to make the bomb stage look good, th that's a lot of mass that we could get rid of. I think that's 2.4 tons we could dump. And then it'd be a lot better off. But it looks good. So I don't know. Now you might ask, why didn't I use the LV-909 here? Well, the problem is the LV-909 is 0.5 tons, whereas this is 0.2 tons. So actually you get less delta V out of this stage if you use the LV-909 here. Anyway, we're uh, coasting to apoapsis and then we'll finish orbit. But this is obviously not good enough to land on... Well, it's good enough to land on the moon. It's not good enough to land, uh, bring Valentina back, so that's the downside. As so often happens with our Kerbal missions. But we'll get as far as I can go. And then we're going to have to make refinements. I've already adjusted the ablator, as you can see. You might consider using a lighter decoupler here. Would be a good thing. Okay, well, that's orbit. Let's uh, have it go to the moon. We should have taken off from the other launch site. Would have made for a more interesting challenge approaching the moon. But, we'll, if, well, it's not like we didn't have enough challenge making this rocket work anyway. It's not like we're carrying a whole lot of extra science, mind you. This is a pretty spare mission, as it would have been. Not, not the most overburdened mission ever. The L3 payload for the N1. I guess I'll trust Kerbal Engineer on the time to node burn thing. So people have asked whether I was going to use the mission editor or anything like that. And I haven't tried. Uh, tried that. Maybe that would be a good way of dealing with this. I'm not sure. But I don't know if I can use that to guarantee that you use the first three stages and only modify the payload. Um, that's a very complicated uh, request, if you will. Okay, there we go. Should be good. Indeed it is. Alright, hang out to the moon. I mean, with any luck, it's not going to be a huge gap, but we'll see. If you could optimize the trajectory with the N1, that would be helpful too. Maybe... Yeah, there's all sorts of possibilities. Ooh, that's a bit of a tilt, but we're not going to use fuel to correct our inclination around the moon, I don't think. That can be solved on launch if we want a flat orbit to return. Sometimes inclined orbits are tough to return from, but this wouldn't be too bad anyway. Maybe we should just not waste time and land over here somewhere. Okay, that's that's a good enough start. We've only got 40 meters per second here. We're a little bit north now. Let's stop here. I don't want to go any further north.
Also, we seem to be landing in not quite the right spot. Um, well, I guess here might do. I don't know. It depends on what the terrain ends up being. I think that's a pretty bad slope right there. Uh-oh. Uh, It's not like I haven't had trouble with moon landings before. Oh god, look at that. I'm aborting to orbit, I'm aborting to orbit. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> That is a heck of a slope, and it's not like we have a whole lot of delta V anyway. But we almost landed. We almost landed. Nope, 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 nope. Let's see how close we are to getting Valentina back. Okay, so here we are around the moon in orbit with 113 meters per second, which is not enough to get back home. We see that um, we need 274.4 meters per second to get back, and so we're about 160 meters per second short. And so that's doable. I think uh, there's many ways of figuring out how to solve this problem with this so that you can make a successful moon landing and uh, come back home. But I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'll give you the craft file. Uh, you guys can uh, figure it out. or uh, if you don't have the Making History DLC, you can probably replicate it. Uh, maybe I can subassembly the base rocket. I don't know if I've accidentally used some part that's only from the Making History DLC, but you can you can try. So I'll link uh, the full craft and the subassembly. So uh, hopefully you can open those. I don't know. Uh, but uh, all right. So with that, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.